Hi, why don't you join us as we discover the best of historic Maidstone in Kent? Perhaps we can even inspire you to visit Maidstone. Let's see where we're talking about. We are around 33 miles from London and Maidstone is served by three railway stations, Maidstone East, Maidstone West and Maidstone Barracks. We're going to be arriving by car and we'll be using one of Maidstone's many car parks. We have chosen the College Road option, so our visit will start near All Saints Church and the Archbishop's Palace. So let's explore Maidstone. And I am literally starting in the car park, with the Master's Tower to my left and the College Gateway in front of us. And this is the Master's House, built of the same Kentish ragstone. These form part of a collegiate church built in the late 14th century, so that makes them roughly 600 years old. Through the arch you can grab a glimpse of All Saints Church, but we'll return a little later. I think Maidstone's history gets overlooked because it's a busy town and people see this every day. As they say, familiarity breeds contempt. We step onto College Road and discover the late Victorian All Saints Church of England School and the cut Bush Arms Houses. We've slipped into College Avenue to catch another part of the original College of All Saints, now known as the Ruined Gateway. We're now heading back to All Saints via the Hermitage Millennium Amphitheatre as a group practices their dance moves. There's seating for around 250 here and normally it's a quieter space where you can just sit back and relax next to the river. And now we get our first glimpse of the River Medway which weaves its way through Maidstone before heading onwards to join the River Thames. And that's the Lock Meadow Millennium Bridge which gives us easy access to Maidstone West Station about 5 minutes away. We're going to head across it, but for a different reason. It gives you some pretty views of the River Medway towards Maidstone, as well as views back towards the Church of All Saints and the Archbishop's Palace. And a site that has got me thinking about exploring the banks of the River Medway. But the reason we've come to Lock Meadow is to discover the stag. Created by Edward Bainbridge Compnell in 1963, it's home was Stag Place in London. It eventually found its way here in 2004. I could sit and watch the world go by all day, but we must head back across the bridge to discover the original way to cross the river. We've arrived at Horseway, which would have been a natural fording point to the deer park at Lock Meadow on the other side. As you climb the slope and look back, you get a view of Maidstone that hasn't changed much in those 600 years. It's time to have a look at All Saints Church, and I have to be honest, I'm a little disappointed. When we arrived it wasn't open and it should have been, we checked. But these things happen. Perhaps we'll be back. Okay, I'll know we'll be back. Around the back of the church, you get views over Lock Meadow and the River Medway and there are plenty of ways to enjoy the river. We now move on to the Archbishop's Palace. Originally there was a manor house on this site where bishops would rest on the journey from London to Canterbury. Then in the 14th century a palace was built here, later exchanged with Henry VIII for other properties. Further additions were made in the 16th century, creating the white end sections. Now let me introduce you to the Apocryphist Garden only open on Wednesdays between May and August, a place of peace and tranquillity. Across Mill Street you'll see the Tithe Barn that later became the stables for the Archbishop's Palace. It now houses the Tywick Drake Museum of Carriages. I'm told it has a fine collection of over 60 vehicles. The problem is since Covid it is only open to pre-booked groups of 10 or more. Here we have the modernist 1930s Roots building behind the mill pond fed by the River Len. It's due to be converted into luxury apartments. At Drake's, formerly the Lamb, 
We have a plaque to the seven people burnt at the stake in 1557 in the nearby Fair Meadow during the reign of Mary I. History is all around you, like this 19th century Russian cannon captured during the Crimean War on Maidstone High Street. But often that history is hidden in plain sight. And now a moment. Typical of many towns and cities, there is some unsympathetic retailers whose shop frontage just looks out of sync with its surroundings. It's hard to believe something can't be done to improve this. Anyway, rant over. There are some places that really look like they've made an effort. Now the stack looks promising, but I'm told we don't have the time. But as I said before, the secret is to look up, and Bank Street in Maystone is there to prove that point. I mean, check out number 78 Bank Street, and then there's number 89, but they're not all as old as they appear. 1913, this one, but it's still listed. Maystone Town Hall dates from the mid 18th century, and it's had a few different uses over the years. Across the road, the Muggleton Inn. A J.D. Weatherspoon's pub started life as the Royal Insurance Offices in 1827. There are a few plaques around the history you can't see, such as the Battle of Maidstone, 141648, during the English Civil War. This area, now Jubilee Square, was known as Hightown from 1261 until the 1820s and was part of the town's marketplace. In the 1820s it moved to the nearby market buildings. And that's where we're heading to next. Next to the Muttleton Inn is the entrance to Market Buildings. Here you'll find yourself in a quirky little lane with an eclectic mix of shops, bars and eateries. The colonnaded walkway runs alongside what would have been the old corn exchange. On the left is Royal Star Exchange, one of Maidstone's little shopping arcades. And on our right is Maidstone Distillery bringing back a time on a tradition to the town. Then we stumble across Frederick's Cafe and Bistro and Patisserie and Wine Shop. Ulrich, sorry, Frederick, is taken over this part of market buildings. It looks like in this part of Maidstone we've become a little bit French. Stepping onto Earl Street we come across the Hazlitt Theatre which also shares the former Corn Exchange. Earl Street which will take you down to the river, is also full of restaurants. These are more the chain variety which you may be familiar with. This building was home to Andrew Broughton, who read out the death sentence on Charles I, so there's still plenty of history here. Further down Earl Street is the 15th century Corpus Christi Hall, which is now home to La Taberna, a family-run Spanish restaurant. One of the biggest names on Earl Street was the Fremlin's Brewery, long since departed. Fremlin's Walk has now occupied that space, another of Maidstone's shopping complexes. But we're passing through to reach St Faith Street. St Faith Street is where you'll find the Maidstone Museum and Art Gallery. We don't have time today to explore, but we will be back, probably after the school holidays. Another memorial stone to the Battle of Maidstone can be found at the entrance to Brinchley Gardens, right next to Maidstone Museum. Brinchley Gardens is a wonderful little park that is also home to a war memorial to the glorious dead that looks remarkably similar to the Cenotaph in London's Whitehall. At Maidstone East Station we find a tribute to Maidstone's oldest resident, an Iguanodon, who was uncovered in 1834. Across the road you'll come across Old Sessions House. The facade is relatively modern, 1911-13, but behind the gates is the 1824 original. It is now home to County Hall, the home of Kent County Council. 
We've now taken the footpath beside Maidstone East Station to bring us to the towpath alongside the River Medway to the North takes us past Aylesford, Rochester and Chatham into the Thames. The stroll south takes us back towards the Archbishop's Palace. I hope you like what we put together here. If you do, give us a like. We'd really appreciate it. And why not subscribe so you don't miss any of our future content? So a thanks to Simon Tandy who asked why not do a video on Maidstone? And a big thank you to you for watching. Stay safe, stay well and happy travels.